live from downtown Coquitlam. This is the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is the Caleb Turner Talk Show special 10th edition anniversary. Happy 10th, Bob. How are you doing? He's doing good. We got a great show planned for you today. Special guests on the first segment with Nevek and Nadnarb Alimes from Serbia. They are coming onto the broadcast to talk chess with us and discuss the game. We're also going to get into the NFL. Not a full preview. Phil Davis will join us in the upcoming weeks for a full NFL preview. We'll talk NHL and, of course, our very own Vancouver Canucks. Great show planned for you today, so sit back and enjoy the ride. You got it on the Anchor Radio Network. The Vancouver Canucks take on the Detroit Red Wings live from the Motor City in Detroit, Michigan, tomorrow at 2 o'clock. The pregame show begins at noon and puck drop at 2 15. You got it live right here on the Anchor Reader Network. You can hear the full play-by-play. Happy 10th edition anniversary, Anchor Radio Network and Caleb Turner Talk Show fans. Your host, Caleb Turner. We're back live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network, live from Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada. It's been a beautiful day today. Beautiful sunshine. Got outside and played some basketball today with some fellow buddies. And actually got to play basketball with the two guys that are joining me in the studio today. And uh, we'll get to them in just a minute. we got a great show today planned. Should be very entertaining. Ten editions, by the way. So for those of you out there listening, I'm sure you guys are counting on both hands how many you guys have listened to. So I'm sure that there's nobody out there that's listened to the full show. Because that's just wrong. It's not even possible. Right, Bob? That's good. So we're going to start off today with a little new. I've actually just started something new that we're going to start doing every week. I'm not going to probably have a bunch of people in studio every week, but something new that we're going to start with the 10th edition. you got to start off right. You know, 10 editions. you got to start making some new plans. i got two guys in studio from Serbia. Now, despite the fact that they are from Serbia, they don't exactly have that big of a thick Serbian accent, although their family is from Serbia. And they are chess champions from Belgrade, Serbia. These guys are the real deal. Navek and Nadnarb, how are you guys doing? Hello. Uh, hi. So, you guys are, um, let's see here. Let's, let's go ahead and get Nadnarb to say something here. How are you doing, Nadnarb? I'm doing great. Sweet. So you guys are from Serbia. Now, you guys um, came to Canada, I hear, a couple years ago. And um, you guys are Canadians now, obviously, Canadian residents. But just a couple quick things to ask you to uh, break the ice here. How old were you guys when you guys started playing chess? I was five, five, five years old. And um, you could tell, um, not, not like seven, seven. Okay. Okay, so five and seven, so pretty good, pretty good age to go ahead and start. Um, so were your parents uh, chess people, or were you guys the first ones in your family to take the chess reins by the bowl? Uh, uh, Dad was pretty good. He was pretty good, and uh, he was pretty good too. And um, he, he was pretty good. Was your mom ever uh, decent at the sport? Dick, is it? <laughs> Is it an Olympic sport over there in Serbia? Oh no, oh, no, no, no. Uh, that'd be. Um, it's not. It's not, it's not as big in Serbia, but there are other other regions like. Uh, uh, I don't know. There's other regions, like, like. I don't. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I know. I know Serbia is landlocked, so you guys probably develop rivals with fellow European. Uh, countries and i think um serbia it's serbia's over there by czechoslovakia um of course it's now czech republic and slovakia they're no longer czechoslovakia because of the uh civil war that was over there. but anyways we're talking chess now i personally have never had much experience with the game um i played in a minor tournament that was very very minor like i was playing against guys that were way younger than me but i still lost 
uh, no chance of winning. I'm not much of a chess player, but quickly, can you describe to me, now I already know this, but for our viewers that don't know, but what is the object of winning, Mr. Nodnar? The object of winning, it is to make the other person feel bad about his life. Okay, so basically, translation of that in English is the object is to take out the king. Not, not really. What you do, you kind of trap him because you can't really take take the king, and um, can't take the king. All you can do is trap trap the king. That's it, man. So now I know there's a queen. Now does the queen ever come into play? Do you ever take out the queen? Uh, you can take out the queen, and the queen actually is the most powerful piece. Very powerful and powerful. Well, yes, of course, in the old days, uh, the queen obviously probably had more power than the king, as, uh, well, the king wanted to treat his queen with the utmost respect, so. Uh, different things that you guys may do in your game, I'll ask Nivek first, and then I'll go to Nadnar. Different things that you might do in the game to throw off your opponent. I like to trash talk and play very offensively. I never try to defend myself, really, but... It usually works because it, so, it really throws off the game. They get confused and they're like, what? And then they lose. Okay. Okay, well, I, that, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good way to do it. I probably, yeah, I would probably be a little more respectful. But anyways, okay, and then, uh, no, no. I make funny faces. That's pretty good. That actually would actually be pretty legitimate. Now, we're dealing with a couple of Serbian champs. These guys are good. They have a chess wrestling championship belt from Belgrade. And what you guys say? It had 20 diamonds on it? Uh, actually, 19. Nin 19, but like there's one of them. It's bigger than the other diamonds. Yeah. So it looks like two. Yeah. Okay, so then that's that's why I thought it was 20. So we got the belt in studio. It's pretty crazy. This thing is probably worth, what is it worth, a couple thousand? No, uh, maybe a couple two thousand. A couple two thousand. Okay, so it'd be like four thousand or six thousand, because obviously a couple would be two. So two times two is four. Or two times three is six. If, yeah, anyways. Okay, so next, do you guys ever bluff your opponents? Now, I know this is something that they strictly do in poker. They like to bluff the opponent where they maybe throw out a card. Or throw out a chip. But you guys ever bluff your opponent? Well, just by using other stuff as bait, then you can make the other people fear weird. And for Univac? I like to, um, when, when they're not looking, I like to steal a piece, throw it under the table, and maybe, like, turn the table around. Maybe they won't notice, and then I bluff. So you guys... Okay, I, I see what I see. you guys did. Okay. Well, I guess it would be legitimate because over in Serbia, there isn't very many chess rules. No, you can even, uh, you, you can even, you can even punch the, punch the ref to make sure that he doesn't, uh, see anything. Yeah. Okay, so the basically, it's free-for-all freestyle chess. Yeah, that's why we have a belt, man. Okay. And that's why it's called wrestling. That's why it would be a wrestling team. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, um, how long have you guys been playing? I know how old you were, but how long have you guys been playing chess? I've been playing for eight years. And you, Nivek? Uh, like, like, 35. 35 years. Okay, so you guys are, you guys are brothers, obviously, so you are... So. How, how old are you? I don't want to say. Okay, so not on the air. How about you, Nivek? I'm 13. Okay, so you're 13. So you've been playing since you were younger. Obviously, um, you've been playing for a little while. So Now, championships, we mentioned the wrestling belt that you guys won with chess. Is there any other championships that um, you guys have won, whether it's been over here uh, in this continent or whether it's been in Europe? I know there was an Asian uh, tournament that you guys went to in China, and there was also an Australian tournament that you guys went to um, in um Oh, man. Uh, New uh, Queensland. Was it the Queensland? I think it was Queensland. Was it the Queensland province? Yeah, it was. Okay, so it was Queensland. Okay. So have you guys... Anything else besides that? If you guys want... I know you guys went to Mexico. Did you guys win a tournament there in Mexico? Uh, we almost won. Okay, so you guys were right on the edge. Yeah. 
Okay, so were you guys both in the championship then? No. You guys lost in the semis? No. The quarters? No. Okay, so it was obviously then in the round robins. No. The preliminaries. Okay, fine. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, any future plans for you guys um, going uh, maybe to the World Championships? I know you guys have thought about it. I've heard this in the news, um, the Serbian news. So, you guys, any World Championship plans? I plan to, I plan to go to Canada and okay. eat. Okay, so you guys are going to... Yeah, Canada has some very, very good food. Um, now, I know that you guys... Uh, you guys are looking at going to a world championship within the next couple of years. I know that's like your sights. But is there ever a possibility that the Olympics will ever bring chess as a sport? If they, if they allow the wrestling part, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, so they have to have the Serbian rules. Serbian rules are the best. Okay. And I also hear, lastly, before you guys go, because I know you guys have to go. Um, you actually, guys, you guys have a, um, a uh, what, do, what do you guys call it? What do you guys call it? Important meeting. Uh, an important meeting, that's right. Um, but I hear that you guys are Rubik's Cube geniuses. Now, I am not much of a Rubik's Cube genius. It takes me 20 minutes to solve. Um, now, I hear... That Nadnarb has a 26 second record, which is the record of Belgrade, Serbia. How about you? Uh, actually, I I don't have any records. You can talk to Nadnarb if you want to know more about the records. But, but he has the records, and that I don't have any records. So, uh, Nadnarb, any records? I forget. Okay, well, I do know that you guys do have the 26 second record. So, thank you for joining us today on the. Anchor Radio Network's Caleb Turner Talk Show. It's been good having you guys are the first in-studio guests. How does that make you feel? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for joining us. When we come back, more on the Caleb Turner Talk Show. You got a live on the Anchor Radio Network. You are listening to a special presentation of the Caleb Turner Talk Show, the 10th edition anniversary. And I'm your host, Caleb Turner. Before we go any further in the broadcast, I have to thank my sound man, commercial man, audio man, video man, special webs man, Bob. I just, what would I do without Bob? And He's presented me with a special 10th edition gift. And this is just, I can't even, words cannot describe the meaning of this gift to me. Live from Bermuda, Bob has hooked up with our NFL post, Pittsburgh Post Gazette NFL expert, Phil Davis, is joining us live on the air. Mr. Davis, how is Bermuda? Oh, sun, surf, and sand all day long, Caleb. Nice talking to you. Oh, man, it's good talking to you, too, man. You're making me jealous there, you and your wife being there. Me and my wife, we'd love to get down there, but, uh, well, we just, you know, with the talk show, and, you know, we're just kind of wrapped up with business. But, man, you got you found a good time to go down there and hear that the weather is 95? Oh, you better believe it. And I am just tanning outside of my little apartment complex that I have here, my condo that I have here in Bermuda. Just tanning outside, watching the waves, did a little surfing and snorkeling earlier, and uh, I'm really enjoying my time here. Nice. No, I've never been to Bermuda. I've wanted to, um, but yeah, I've just not been able to, to get down there. And um, what's that one? Uh, there's something over. Is it called the Bermuda Triangle? Ah, yes, there is a Bermuda Triangle around here. Like, bad and luck? I it, and I'm still alive, so we're good. Yeah, like, I I remember watching a, actually, a Hardy Boys episode from the 60s. I remember watching an episode, and they were flying over the Bermuda Triangle, and the plane crashed in the water, and they had to get to the shore. Um, Supposedly, the Bermuda Triangle is bad luck? It is. Planes, ships, any, there's several 
several occasions where things have disappeared. People even see the UFO is flying around the Bermuda Triangle, supposedly. Supposedly. I haven't seen any yet. But uh, what are you trying to do, scare me, give me nightmares or something? About not being able to make it back? Not like I'd want to go back. It's beautiful here. But, uh, yeah, nothing wow. like Pittsburgh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, obviously right now Pittsburgh is in snow. They are covered. There is bad weather. You definitely yeah, and picked that's a. Why I'm in Bermuda. Yeah, you definitely picked a good time for a vacation. That's that's pretty classic. <laughs> so, yeah, can you give us an idea? Three or four times. Yeah. Oh, you've four. been here three. Or four? Wow, man. Of course, you make the money at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Oh yes, but uh, that's all besides that. I love my job, love my wife, love my life. Wow, man, such a sweet homey man. Do you guys ever plan on settling down and maybe? Uh, Starting a family? Uh, yeah, we've thought about it. Maybe in, a, maybe in a year or so, we probably will. Okay, okay, all right. So, can you give us an idea of how much this trip cost? This trip to Bermuda cost about, oh, well, I mean, are you talking expenses or just flying there? Um, or expenses and everything? Well, maybe everything combined, because I do know that I had a colleague that went to Hawaii, and... It was several thousand dollars with the plane ride and the beachfront condo and food. Because I know that the restaurants are very expensive in faraway places. And they charge, I hear this, they charge double for tourists. <laughs> you know, I think that's so true. Because when we've been going out to eat, the prices are ridiculous. Yeah. But it's good food. It is good. No so doubt about it. Anything exotic that you guys mean? I know that they have a lot of crab and a lot of, uh, like, fish. But now here's something that I have eaten. Here in um, the part of Canada where I'm at, we have a lot of Asians here, and they have a lot of really, really good Asian food. But I have had jellyfish. Have you had jellyfish in your time in Bermuda? See, my wife was just telling me we ought to go out and have some jellyfish. Now, uh, I think maybe tomorrow. I'm thinking tomorrow. Yeah, the baby. Yeah, tomorrow. We're going out tomorrow, and uh, we're going to go try some jellyfish, because it's my first time. She's had it before. I haven't, of course. Yeah, you're I'm missing out. laid back, laid back type of guy, but... A lot of carbs. She's going to be trying to... A lot of mm -hmm. carbs. You have to watch it in the carbs, because a lot of Asian food has a lot of uh, carbs. You get you get filled up um, by... You actually have... You know, I, I take back that statement. You have to eat a lot to get filled up with Asian oh, yeah. food. Like you can just eat, you can just eat and eat rice all day, and you just never get filled up. You feel like you've just got a hole in your leg. Mm -hmm. I love rice. Rice is good. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like yeah. Well, it depends how it's prepared. I don't like the hard rice where you can still it takes a long time and it gets stuck in your teeth and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I like white rice, no brown rice. Yes. I try to stay away yeah. from. I try to stay away from health food, and supposedly brown rice is healthier for you, so I stay away from that stuff. So stay away. Far, far away. I'm glad you're enjoying your time in Bermuda, and um, but we've got a NFL season to begin discussing. Now, I know there's a lot of things that have been floating around, obviously with Manti Teo, and we know all stuff about that, but anyways, we talked about that last time, And but the NFL Combine is happening right now, and that's why more Manti Teo stuff came up, but anyways, my top 10 teams this year, I have a list of top 10 teams. I have a list of my top 10 quarterbacks that I am going to rank. And by the way, I don't know if you've heard about, uh, th this is totally off topic, but do you have any reaction to the Oscar Pistorius incident there with his uh, alleged killing his girlfriend? Really? Have, did you hear about that? Um, no, actually I haven't. I've been here for quite a while and we tried to keep away from oh, all that news. Oh, that's, that's actually very, awesome very... Puzzle. That's very, very good. Yeah, keeping keeping away. Yeah, yeah. you know what? That's actually something I've heard that people do when they go on vacation. They basically turn off the cell phones. Now, I'm very glad that you turned back on your cell phone and responded to Bob's email. And But they just turn off the electronics. No TV, no computer, no cell phone. Just get out there on the waves and the wind and the waves going through your hair. And that's basically what you do. But anyways, Oscar Pistorius, just a couple days ago, um, allegedly thought he heard there was an intruder in the house. And, he, and now I know you have to understand the area of South Africa. There's a lot of gun violence in South Africa, which is no it's no surprise. But there's a lot of gun violence in South Africa. So he thought, allegedly thought it was an intruder. And he opened fire and it was actually his girlfriend in the bathroom. And he gunned her down and killed her. 
And, um, yeah. yeah, very, very sad incident. And he is being accused of premeditated murder. And um, so it's a pretty wild situation there. Obviously, you know who Oscar Pistorius is there with the Blade Runner in the Olympics, running in the Olympics with the uh, W amputee from South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, so his life just got messed up, and it's, well, he's done. There's no way he's ever going to recover. But anyways, that's just some other information that surfaced, and uh, I thought we might as well go ahead and talk about that. Anyways, my top ten teams for next year. Now, I, you got to understand, obviously, I'm a Seahawks fan. We've obviously made that very, very clear. And I love my Seahawks. But I do not have them as number one in my top ten teams that are going to make it in the playoffs and stuff. I do not even have them as number two in my top ten teams. I have Seattle in number three. And that is because of the buildup and the chemistry that they have uh, managed to develop with their defense-first mentality. And then they get the ball into the hands of Russell Wilson. But all, all, all that aside... I have to go with the New England Patriots as the number one team going into next year because this year they had some very, very key injuries, much like your Pittsburgh Steelers. And nothing nothing against the Steelers, but they're down the list quite a ways in my top ten teams. But that that's beside the point. Because, because the quarterback, Big Ben, is getting significantly older. And you have to understand it. From my perspective, I say right now, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers are my 10th team, and they're actually tied with, in my eyes, I think the Lions are going to have a good team. The Lions, the Lions and the Bengals, I think, are going to have a good team this year, and I have them fighting for that last wild card spot um, coming out of the AFC. So I got New England, and you're probably wondering why I have New England as number one, because last year, like I said, a lot of injuries, Ron Gronkowski, Aaron Hernandez, both hurt at certain point, certain times in the season. I think they're going to come back healthy, and you are going to see a very, very dynamic New England Patriots team, and I think this will be the last year that Tom Brady will take his team to the playoffs, maybe to the Super Bowl. It depends, and it really, really, here's where it depends. It depends if your Pittsburgh Steelers the Baltimore Ravens and the Denver Broncos can give New England a run for their money coming out of the AFC. That's my whole entire thing with the AFC. Your 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 response to that? I like the Denver Broncos personally. I'm sorry, Steelers. I'm so sorry, but we're getting a little old. Okay, our injuries are starting to hurt us, and you know it's just our offensive and defensive lines struggle with injuries. It's mainly our problem. And uh, you said our quarterback was getting old. I don't know quite. I don't know what quite to say about that. He's still a very, very dynamic quarterback. I like him. He's big, huge, big man. Okay, but that's enough about the Steelers. Uh, the Broncos. I like them. <laughs> it's uh, Peyton Manning. You know. Yes. And I'm seeing. I'm seeing their their defense is going to step up, step up, as you said. As your uh, Seahawks, the defense first mentality, that is what's going to start winning it. Because whoever, offense will win games, but defense will win championships. And that's what the Steelers, the Steelers have a very strong defense. Very strong. But we're going to need to start getting some good picks in the draft. And we're going to need to start restructuring our line a little bit more. But yes, AFC, the Patriots, as you said, Previously, the New England Patriots. They are going to be um, in the playoffs, definitely. That's what I think. But I don't have as high hopes for them as you do. Of course, I have things against the Patriots. And Bill yes. Belichick. I mean, Bill Belichick <laughs> and all of his cronies over there Hoodie. in New Hoodie. England. Nothing, nothing against them personally. Just I have something against them. Well, I personally. do too. I... I am I am a anti Bill Belichick. Now we have to give all the credit. He is a good he is a good coach. But Yes, and he wears the snazziest, snazziest sweaters. Well, and that's where I don't like him. I don't like him because he seems all mysterious and hiding he he always seems like he's hiding something. You know, and, and that's where the name Bill Belichick came from. Because of course with the, the videotaping, the was it called Spygate? The, the Spygate oh, issues. Yeah. Yes. Beat yeah. us in the playoffs, and then the very next game they got caught doing it. I think they, I know, I know they did it against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but nothing against them. Now, That's did the Steelers did. win that year? Did they? Was that the year that they won the Super Bowl, or was that another year? No, we lost in the playoffs that year to them because every time we would snap the ball, they'd seem to know what play we were running already. Okay, 
Okay, so then that was the year that you guys... Okay, okay, wow. So my eyes are being opened now. I'm not very uh, uh, educated with the whole entire past playoff years. Obviously, you are a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, so you would know what's been going on and what's been happening. Um, I am a Seahawks fan. I know, I know a little bit about... You know, random stuff that's happened in the previous years with NFL teams and in the playoffs. I remember a couple years ago, Arizona and Green Bay met. I don't know if you remember that, the shootout that they had. And was it Green uh-huh. Bay who ended up winning? I think it was Green Bay in overtime, I think, that won that game. Yeah. And was that, that was the year yeah, that they so. won. Was that the year that they won the Super Bowl? Was that just two years ago? Uh, I think it was either two or three years yeah, ago. Yeah, two or three years ago. It didn't have the Steelers in it. Yeah. I remember Kurt Warner was a quarterback in one of those years, and then he, of course, retired. Now, he's a born again Christian, and we've made it very, very clear that this... We've made it very, very clear on this radio network that this is a Christian radio network, and so I like pointing out Christian athletes that are in sports, um, and Kurt yeah. Warner is a born again Christian, so uh, it's it's uh, it was good to see him get very, very successful, and he was so close to winning the Super Bowl there that year. That was against us, by the way, that he lost the Super Bowl last year. Oh, it but- was. All that aside, he did. He made like kids' videos and stuff too, didn't he? Kids' videos, Kurt Warner. Yes, yes, he did. Yes, yes. He's a very, yeah, he's he a had, very, he very had nice a guy. Christian thing going, good sportsmanship. He had a camp. I even think he played, went and visited some uh, children's homes and stuff, hospitals. He had this whole campaign going where he was Mister Good, Mister Good Christian, which he is. Yeah, he reminds me of an older Tim Tebow. Yeah, Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow got kind of sucked into the publicity, though. More, yeah, more yeah, about. we've definitely, we've been following that. I haven't gotten into that yet, but he definitely made a very, very big boo-boo, and it's um, it's very, very disappointing for me because I am a huge Tim Tebow fan. Uh, the number on my jersey is his number, um, and I chose it specifically because of that. Um, he's had a big influence on me in the, in the many things that I do, and uh, it just goes to show you that you can't put your trust in, in one man. Um, it goes right. for all things of life. That, you know, putting your trust and putting your respect and putting your utmost attention into one man, sometimes you can get disappointed because no man is perfect, including myself, including you, including all the people on planet Earth, the over 7 billion people that are on Earth. And that's why, of course, we point out that's why Christ came to die for the sins of men. But I wouldn't necessarily say that he has sinned. I don't think we're here to debate that, but I think it's just something that he's made a decision that I lost quite a bit of respect for him. But anyways, right? that's all beside the point. We're talking NFL, but that is sort of NFL. That is sort of, speaking of Tebow, where do you think he's going to end up? Will he play in New York? Will he go to um, uh, Jacksonville or will he hang up the cleats? I think that if he stays in New York, he probably won't do as well as if he moved on to Jacksonville. But I do like, uh, I can't say that I like New York's team. They have a lot of our players, but are, as in Steelers, you know. But they do have some of our wide receivers. I'm sure if he stayed there, he could do fairly decent. Jacksonville, he could start a very nice career. But still, either way, either way, he's still Tim Tebow. He could. He's a wild card, pretty much. Yeah. Once he's once he's on his game, he's on his game, and he's bringing it, and so, he's cooking. But then he has his off games yeah. as well. Yeah. Where he's Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Is there ever a possibility? I'm not saying necessarily next year, but could there ever be a possibility that Tim Tebow would land in Pittsburgh? Is there a possibility Tim Tebow would land in Pittsburgh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking. Well, because, all right, one of our back, backup quarterbacks, Byron Leftwich, broke his arm this year. Uh, I think he will be able to play next year. What we um, struggled with a little bit was we had to play with our third string quarterback, Charlie Batch. Yeah. Because we just went down because our second string, Leftwich, his arm was broken, so we had mm-hmm. to play with our third string. He's a smart, he's a smart quarterback. He's a veteran. He knows a lot, but. He can't really scramble that well, mm-hmm. and uh, his throwing isn't always accurate. And he's but, older, right? Yeah, he is. He could be. What I want, what I want to happen is for Batch to retire and become a quarterback coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers, okay. like a quarterbacks coach, because he's got it up in his head. But that's now, what I think. And then that would leave a slot open. And yes, potentially we could get Tim Tebow 
So if we really wanted to. The style of offense that the Steelers run. Could Tim Tebow now here's the thing. Because wherever Tim Tebow goes, whatever team he goes to, he has to be able to play the style of offense that he plays, that he played well in Denver. Now, I know his throwing arm wasn't very good in Denver, but that style where he can run, he has this run-first mentality or throw if it's open, because wherever he's going to go, he has to be able to play in that kind of a environment, in that kind of a situation. Does Pittsburgh have that style of offense where it's a run-first mentality with the Iron Curtain? Well, um, here, let's focus on this right now. If you wanted a running quarterback, what we've got right now is Ben Roethlisberger. He's more of a scrambler, not much much of a runner. So we have our offensive line set up for him already. Now the offensive line we have is getting old. I think like two um, some two people on our offensive line are thinking about retiring. So we're going to have to fill those spots. Now what we would want to do if we wanted to switch to a running quarterback like Tim Tebow we would have to switch up our offensive line positions. We'd have to put in some run blockers in there at, at the normal spots. You know, we would have mm-hmm. to switch that all all the dynamic around. Yeah. But right now, we're more of a passing. We used to be more, uh, men, our mentality was more towards running, running the football. We'd be, with, back when we had Jerome Bettis of the bus, as everyone would call him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, by the way, Jerome Bettis is going to be I hope. I hope he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. No, he's got it. He was up for nomination last year. Oh, he, he has to. The final stages, he has to make the Hall of Fame. He has to make the Hall of Fame. If he doesn't totally. make the Hall of Fame, they got problems. He is amazing. He was amazing. Amazing, yeah. amazing running back. Yeah. Um, yeah. I watched him. I watched him. I watched him. I only saw him make one huge mistake in his entire career. And that was in the playoffs. I think it was the AFC Championship at Super Bowl Forty against the Indianapolis Colts. And uh, we were on the goal line, and we were at about the three-yard line. All he had to do was punch it in. And what he did was he ran up the middle, and some guy dove in and hit the helmet on the ball, hit his helmet straight on the ball, and the ball popped out backwards. The Colts picked it up and started running with it. Now, luckily, Ben Roethlisberger our quarterback, the last man who could have caught him, grabbed him by his shoelace, barely, and tripped the guy up. And then hmm. the best kicker in the league on the Colts ended up missing like a 48-yard Adam field goal. Vinatieri. Adam Vinatieri. Adam Vinatieri. that game to go Adam, on yeah. win Super Bowl 40. Adam Vinatieri, yep. Yes. And you guys Adam got Vinatieri lucky. I will, I will admit this. You guys got really lucky on that specific play. But, now this is venting some of my Seattle Seahawks anger, but... The referees were totally pro Pittsburgh in that Super Bowl. I'm sorry, but they just they were. There, I got it off my chest. I've been meaning to tell you that for the two times that we had you on the air and the last couple times that we've had you on the air. I've wanted to get that off my chest. The referees in Super Bowl 40 were pro Pittsburgh. There. How how does it feel to have all that off your chest? It feels great. It feels unbelievable. Back to the top ten teams. The Super Bowl party. You know the Super Bowl party they mm-hmm. had mm-hmm. before that Super Bowl at uh, Cobo Hall? Yes. You know they had that here. The party, I think, was here. And uh, the whole hall was filled with Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, people would come in and they'd get their j- jerseys autographed. Mm-hmm. And they'd buy memorabilia, you know, so on and so forth. The whole place was full of Steelers except for one stand occupied by one Seattle Seahawks player and he was the only one from their team at the party so i want to know what was up with that are you talking about after the super bowl or before it no before the super bowl before the super bowl they had a party the saturday a week before the super bowl at cobo hall Hmm. and he was the only one there now now there was a pretty decent line for him you know jersey signed and stuff autographed but he was the only one so Hmm. i don't know i don't know yeah i I remember that now. Um, it could have been something where they wanted to focus on the game and maybe uh, try to block out all the other distractions that were coming from possibly the game. I, I don't. I, I honestly don't know. I, was that Sean Alexander that was the guy that was there? Huh? Was it Sean Alexander? I don't. Uh, yeah, I think it was him. I didn't get anything signed by him. I'm sorry. Okay. I just saw him from a distance. But I went looking all around, so I don't know. 
Okay. But that was maybe it was a Steelers party or something. Okay. It could have been just all stars. Anyways, back to the top ten teams. Um, I've got obviously AFC on the top with New England. Now that doesn't mean that I'm favoring them to win the Super Bowl. These are my regular season pick teams. Now, obviously, later on, long time from now when the season gets closer to the season begins, we'll obviously get our Super Bowl picks in, and uh, you know we'll we'll see what we can do with that, and uh, we'll we'll make our Super Bowl picks. But my top ten teams are as follows: New England as number one, having probably one of the best records in the NFL. I have Green Bay at number two. I think Aaron Rodgers has one more good year left, and I'm looking for Green Bay to pick up a wide receiver to replace um, Jennings because it sounds like Jennings is either going to leave or retire. Um, so I'm looking for Pittsburgh to pick up a wide receiver. I have my Seahawks in third. I think what Seattle needs is they need one wide receiver that can take the bull by the horns and be the leader of that team. I know we have already a lot of leaders that have been established. I think the defense is still good. I don't think they need to switch up anything uh, in the running game. I think Marshawn Lynch and um, Turv Dunn are very, very good uh, uh, run, running the ball. I have San Francisco in fourth, much to my displeasure of hating the San Francisco 49ers. I just think they're going to have a really, really good team this year. I have the uh, Denver Broncos in fifth. I think Peyton Manning is going to have one more year of excellence. And I honestly think if I'm going to pick a team coming out of the AFC going to the Super Bowl, it's probably going to be the Denver Broncos. What would you say to that? I would have to agree, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to see my Steelers go. I think the Broncos do sound like they're going to be doing very good next year. Peyton Manning, yes, I believe, has another year left. Another year left in him. And the team is good for now. Yeah. I mean, I I think the Steelers can can push it. I, I think that they can make... Where do you have the Steelers on this list exactly? Well, well, let, let me finish. Let, let me finish. Number six, I have the Colts. I think Andrew Luck um, is going to have a really, really good encore to his rookie year. And I think they're going to get into the playoffs. And I think they will make it past the first round. Which leads me to say this. I think... No, 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 no. The Indianapolis Colts, are, are they in the same division as New England? Or are they with Denver? No, they're in a different, they're in a different division, I believe. So... But I don't think they have the defense. I don't think they have the defense to put up with the, They're in the division with the, uh, who are they in the division with? Is it the Giants? I can't remember anybody. They're with the it's, Giants, uh, no. Jacksonville, I think, is in their division, isn't it, they? Yeah, 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 Jacksonville, the Jacksonville division, that's right. No, 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 see, what I'm saying is, is there's certain teams on this list, in fact, all the teams, need to pick up one or two players to to turn the tide and to maybe flip the switch, so to speak, that they will be that team that comes out of their conference or comes out of their division. Indianapolis needs a lot of help. I'm not saying they're going to be in the Super Bowl. They won't. My pick coming out of the AFC, uh, my pre-pre-Super uh, Bowl, pre-pre-preseason Super Bowl picks is Denver and Seattle in the Super Bowl. I don't think my NFC pick's going to change. But the Colts have some help. They need a lot of help. Seventh, I have the Giants in seventh. I think the Giants have at least one more year left. I think Eli Manning has at least one more run. I can't see them winning another one, uh, despite all the talk last year of them winning and beating the Patriots, which I was very happy. I was glad that they beat the Patriots. Um, and I'm sure you were. Yes, I like to see the Patriots lose. And yeah. I yeah. did like seeing the Patriots yeah. lose, but you're saying that the Steelers are well, below the Giants? Well, see, this is my pre preseason picks right now. Coming in oh, eighth. Come on. Coming in are you eighth. Are this on last year? Well, maybe. Coming in eighth. Coming in oh, eighth. Okay. Uh huh, yeah. Uh huh. Coming in eighth, I have the defending Super Bowl champs of the Baltimore Ravens. I even despite losing Ray Lewis, I think they can easily make the playoffs. They'll probably lose in the first round or maybe the second round, depending on who they pick up in the offseason. I have them in eighth, in ninth. We beat, them, we beat them with our third string quarterback, though. That was yeah, but yeah, yeah, well, was it in Pittsburgh or was it in Baltimore? It was in Baltimore. Oh, um. You have me in a loss of words. But, okay, okay, let, let, let me say this then. How did Baltimore win the Super Bowl? How did Baltimore win the 
Baltimore win the Super Bowl. Their defense. Exactly. Totally. Defense Shut versus mentality. Defense. In my eyes, I think we talked about this earlier. Uh, well, no, towards the end of the season. I think I had you on the air for the first time towards the end of the season. What was it? Pittsburgh was like 27th in the NFL in yards allowed. Pittsburgh gave up on the defense, and they tried to be an offensive first mentality. Pittsburgh is not an offensive first mentality uh, team. They have to run the defense. You want to know why we started going offense is when we started bringing in all these rookie wide receivers Mm. who were fast and had hands, and we wanted to throw to them, and then we just took our focus off of our defense where it should have been all along. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. You know what? That actually makes a lot of sense because – it, when the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years ago, it was a defensive first mentality in that their defense would score half their points in the game. Yes, that's what Troy Palomaro was young. Yeah. And Joey Porter and James Harrison. Yeah. And, yeah, see, but now, now, we've got some good cornerbacks who are, who are in good shape and, Troy, if he doesn't get injured, he'll be in there, and he'll play some good zone. He's definitely not the same as he was in Super Bowl 40 or Super Bowl 43, but, you know, that's the way that is. One thing... uh, James Harrison is still a a, a huge figure, even though they changed the way he had to play the game. Mm -hmm. You know, he's still a good player, even though he can't play his own style of football, which is the real style of football. People just make different rules to yeah. neglect people like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing that I do like about Troy Palomar is that I really love his commercials that he does with head and shoulders. <laughs> you know he wears a wig for that, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think I knew that. Um, it doesn't look very legit. <laughs> it's not. It's a wig. He wears the same wig for every commercial. Okay. Well, it would make sense. His hair style looks the same. Anyways, coming in ninth... I have the New Orleans Saints. Now, this is kind of an iffy one. I was battling back and forth as to whether to put New Orleans in my top 10, but I really think that with getting back Sean Payton, because Sean Payton is coming back next year to coach the uh, New Orleans Saints, I think Drew Brees has a couple more years left in his prime, and I think next year is going to be one of them, and I'm guaranteeing you the New Orleans Saints will be a threat. People won't think it right now, but I'm just going to pre-pre-pre-say it the New Orleans Saints will be a threat coming into next year's season. And rounding up the list in 10th, I have the following three teams. The Detroit Lions. I think the Lions will make the playoffs next year and break. uh, Well, they already broke the streak a couple years ago of making the playoffs. But I think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they had a really, really rough year this year with Matt Stafford. Um, Coming in that second of the 10 teams, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. I think the Bengals have one more year with Andy Dalton. And I think S.J. Green will be back. uh, A.J. Green, excuse me. And rounding out the third of the third of the three list, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. In the fact that if they can improve their defense, because you gotta think, all the guys that have played with the Pittsburgh Steelers the last several years, they are old. They are grandpas. They all have kids that are, you know, teenagers now. So they gotta start thinking, like you said earlier draft they got to draft some good young players which they did they have done that they brought in a couple wide receivers but see here's the thing they were like the seattle seahawks this year in the fact that their defense was you know iffy now i know the seattle's defense was much better than pittsburgh but seattle had a lot of young wide receivers now maybe we have right now maybe they were making the jump sooner and they were better wide receivers than pittsburgh's but just let me tell you this The Pittsburgh Steelers have some good wide receivers, and if they've learned anything this year, they will be significantly better next year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And if Ben Roethlisberger stays healthy, the Steelers will make the playoffs, they will win their division, they will be a threat in the AFC, and they will definitely make a push for the Patriots. But right now, what I'm seeing right now with the team that finished last year and with some various moves that they've done to start the offseason, the Pittsburgh Steelers right now are 10th on my list. And for me right now, they do not make the playoffs coming out of the AFC. So that's just my thoughts. Well, as you said, those are just your thoughts. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Steelers should have been way up there, but, you know, that's, those are my thoughts. 
Everybody, everybody has the right to be wrong. Yeah, especially yeah. Here, yeah. What, what, what are what's that one verse in the Bible? My thoughts are not your thoughts. Something like that. What about our thoughts? What is is there thinking? a verse? There's like a verse in the Bible that's like, "My thoughts are not your thoughts," say of the Lord, or something like that. I think it's like, "My thoughts are higher than thy thoughts." Yeah, so, so, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll pray about it. <laughs> Okay, so my top 10 quarterbacks quickly because I'm running out of time here in the year. We got to get to a commercial break, but because we have something else planned for tonight, which that's another surprise that Bob has surprised me with. But anyways, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, My top 10 quarterbacks going to next year. I've got Tom Brady as number one. I think Tom Brady is going to be a very good quarterback. Um, I think it's I think this is his last year. This is his last year of being a good quarterback. I don't think he's got anything else left in the tank after this year. You you got that, Bob? Okay, I th- I, th- I think I I think he got. It. Well, anyways, well, 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 yeah, okay, good. My second quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Um, he had kind of a average year this year. I think he's gonna do okay. Um, but that's just my take. Um, uh, number three, I have Drew Brees. Now these are stats wise. These aren't, like, performance-wise. These are stats. These are my top 10 quarterbacks as stats. I think Breeze is going to be up there in yards, passing touchdowns. I think this year, why the New Orleans Saints did not make the playoffs was because Drew Breeze, every game, thought everybody on the field was on his team, and that's why he threw so many picks. I think he thought everybody on the field was on his team. That's why he threw so many interceptions. So... Uh, that's that. That's that's why the New Orleans Saints didn't make the post. But anyways, number four I have Peyton Manning. I think he's gonna have a decent year. Number five I have his brother Eli. Um, I think he's gonna have another pretty good year. Number six I have my Russell Wilson. I think he's gonna do a lot better passing the ball this year, even though he was superb anyways. Um, I think Matt Ryan from the Atlanta Falcons. I think he's gonna do okay stat wise. Um, Andrew Luck. I think he's gonna do good. That's an eighth. Ninth I have Joe Flacco. I think he's gonna do all right. In tenth. I have Matt Stafford, Ben Roethlisberger, and I have a question mark next to RG3. Mm. Because... Was, did I see a Kaepernick in there? Uh, no, I did not see a Kaepernick in there. Oh, all right. Well, he's all right, I guess. But, I think... I yeah, think I okay, Here, here's my take on Kaepernick. I know he did... Very, very, very well down the stretch. And he did very, very, very well in his three playoff games that he played. But when he got to the Super Bowl, he got himself a very, very wide awakening. And what Super Bowl championship football is played like? He got his eyes opened by he got his eyes opened by the world's best defense for at least last season. Baltimore had the world's best defense. Um, and I know Pittsburgh's obviously got a good defense, but they haven't really opened it up the last two years. But Baltimore's defense was really, really good last year. I do not see Colin Kaepernick having the same success as he had last year. I think he was a one-year wonder. And that's just my take on it. My thoughts. My thoughts, exactly. There you go, my thoughts. Maybe we can en- maybe we can entitle our segments that we do. We can just call them The Thoughts with Phil Davis or something like that. The yeah, Thoughts Revealed. Thoughts. Hey, man, I got to let you go. We've got airtime. Our airtime is ticking away. I know we're going to have a longer extended edition today. We have a couple more seg- segments coming up later on in the broadcast. But thanks for doing this, man. Enjoy the rest of your vacation from sunny Bermuda. Tell your wife hi for me. And my wife says hi, by the way. I believe... If I'm correct, uh, I believe my wife is getting in contact with Mrs. Davis. What? Have they been? Have they been like keeping in contact? I, I know, I know she got her email and was uh, emailing her back and forth. Is are they still doing that? Yeah, I think they are. Okay, so yeah, she'll she'll obviously that's just not that's called a public hi. I'm saying a public hi on the radio that my wife says hi to your wife. But anyways, enjoy Bermuda, man. Hi. All right. Tell her I said hey. Yeah, we will do. My wife says hey. Yeah. She says hey. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. They just said hey to each other. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. The gang's all here. Anyways, thanks, man, for doing this. All right. Yep, thanks for having me. All right, we'll talk to you when you get back mainland. Happy uh, radio anniversary, bro. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. That, that, yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. All right,
Yeah, see ya. Phil Davis of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette live from Bermuda. Bob, where is Bermuda? I know it's I know it's south, and I know it's in the ocean. And I know there's the only thing I know about Bermuda is obviously it's a beach and it's got a lot of things there, you know, sun, sand, and everything else. But I also know about the Bermuda Triangle, which we talked about earlier. And that's obviously an interesting situation in itself. Coming up next, Bob, you are amazing. We have another call-in slash studio segment. We have two young ladies, and well, not exactly young. Young is nice. We don't know exactly how old they are. We do know that they have won several cooking awards. Yes, cooking awards. We have two cooking experts coming up on the Caleb Turner Talk Show. The Anchor Radio Network is going to have two cooking experts. And get this. Anna Herb Renrut from Turkey and Aki Sej Kuk from New Delhi. That, those two names are mouthfuls. That's that's pretty amazing. Um, Aunt Miss Miss Renrut is going to be joining us in studio, or I should say, Mrs. Renrut. Sorry, Mrs. Renrut. She is just sitting outside in the lobby, and she just heard me and glanced up and said, uh, uh, <clears throat> "Excuse me, I am married." Um, and Mrs. Cook is going to be joining us live from a long distance telephone call from New Delhi. Are you kidding me? We are having a long-distance phone call from New Delhi, and it is going to be absolutely amazing. The Caleb Turner Talk Show, happy 10th anniversary edition, folks. I'm so happy you took the time to join us today. February 23rd, 2013, at the Caleb Turner Talk Show rolls on. We have so much more left on the broadcast. The food experts are next. We'll get into the NHL, the Canucks, maybe later on in the broadcast. But the food experts are next. You have it live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. As a part of the Anchor Radio Network special 10th edition anniversary, you can purchase our commemorative t-shirt live on the anchorradionetwork.com slash shop. And you can look for the special edition t-shirt, black and white. And you can go to anchorradionetwork.com slash shop to purchase your free and free plus shipping commemorative t-shirt. You are listening to a special 10th edition commemorative talk show edition on the Anchor Radio Network and the Caleb Turner Talk Show. Your host, Caleb Turner. We're back live on the Anchor Radio Network and the Caleb Turner Talk Show. Special 10th edition anniversary. What a show we've had so far. Phil Davis of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette live with his wife from... Bermuda. Yes, we talked about the Bermuda Triangle. They had no problems, though, flying through it. Absolutely no problems flying through the scary and psychologically uh, dementing Bermuda Triangle. Also, we had Nevek and Nadnarb. Alimas? Alimas? Chess experts from Serbia. Here in Canada, can I tell you something? We have had the last three weeks. We have we have constantly had you know NHL, NFL, NBA, NCAA sports talk. But this week, my special audio editor, commercial editor, video editor, online supervisor, and sitting to my right, Bob has come up with so much stuff for us today. It's been fantastic. And especially the last-minute edition of adding the following two ladies. We're going to talk with Miss Akisej Cook first, but we are also going to have Anna Herb Renrut live in studio. But Akisej Cook is first. Live from New Delhi, Mrs. Cook, how are you doing? I am doing fine, thank you. It is... uh, is I am doing good. Uh, it is definitely a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, we have personally, honestly, never had a woman on the show, so you are the very, very first female 
to be on the show, and Bob is laughing at me, like, hysterically. But anyways, it is very, very, it, it is an honor to have you, by way of long distance, from New Delhi. Uh, how is the weather in New Delhi? It is doing fine. It's very hot. We are having some very hot weather and humid. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, that would be expected. Uh, we had a beautiful, beautiful day here, uh, actually, in Coquillum. Uh, we had uh, probably 55 degrees. Uh, it was sunny, partly cloudy, uh, no rain, which was nice because we've had rain the last three days, and that's actually been a downpour the last three days, so that's been very, very upsetting. But you two, which Mrs. Anna Herb is not in studio yet, but she's sitting outside, but it apparently which we just found this out uh, a couple of uh, hours ago before the broadcast, that you two are actually met at the Bangladesh Culinary Arts Convention. You guys became best friends. Just the relationship between you two and sharing each other's passion and cooking, just well, how, how much has that meant to you as a cook? As a cook, I should say. It has meant a lot to me over the years, just being able to switch recipes back and forth and share recipes. And it's been a lot of fun ever since I met her. We have had so much fun just being together and cooking and having fun experimenting with new recipes. Now, it's kind of it's kind of interesting because um, your last name is Cook. And so if you pronounce that English, it's Cook. So you guys are I, – I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, it is. Do you always face a lot of uh... – uh, is there always like is there somebody that always jokes around about that about your last name how, how you are a chef cook and uh, your last name is Cook? Yes, my friends do that to me a lot. Yeah, that's that, that's what I thought. Um, now something else that uh, I I I have to poke fun at where you are at New Delhi. I like the fact that we're talking about um cooking things and and food and you are from New Delhi. I like that Delhi. And how it's uh, food and uh, bread and dealing with that kind of stuff. Do you cook with meats? Yes, I do. Most of the time it's with squid. Most of the time it's not with, you know, usual deli meats in America like uh, turkey or ham. Usually it's with squid and octopus and stuff like that. But, yes, New Delhi. Now, I do know that um, I've heard things. Now, I know you're you're in India, obviously. But, um I, uh, you definitely are very, very fluent in English, and I, I am very, very thrilled with that because I think it would have been very, very difficult to have a thick Indian accent. Uh, not the Indians, but the Indians over there in India. Uh, it would have been tough to decipher the language. Um, have you taken in English? Have, have you gone to school uh, to learn English? Yes, I have. Um, ever since I was in <clears throat> a little child, my parents had me learn English. Okay. Okay. So then obviously, the yeah, obviously, um, that was something that your parents wanted you to learn right off the bat before you got deep into your cooking skills. Yes. Okay. Um, it's easier to read several recipes that way. That's true. I have heard that the Indian language is very, very difficult. Um, it's a bunch of like symbols um, as we have a lot of people from your neck of the woods, uh, neck of the woods is a expression that we use here in, um, in North America, but I'm sure that you know all about that and stuff like that. You probably went to school learning that kind of stuff. Um, but we have a lot of people from your neck of the woods that live here. Um, I have personally never tried curry and I probably never will. Uh, the smell is very, very questionable. Um, but I enjoy I, I enjoy eating some Indian food. Actually, not really. But um, for the for the sake of being on the broadcast, I will say that I like enjoy eating Indian food because I have to be nice. Um, now I do know this that apparently now I don't know if you use it or not, but the Indians over there in India like using dog and cat. Um, do you cook with dog and cat? No, not usually. I try to. Stay away from that because I feel bad eating other people's pets. Because around here, you never know whether it's somebody's pet because they don't have leashes or collars usually. So, so you try to stay away from the uh, the foods that would be considered pets. Now I know a lot of people over there. I've heard that they like eating rats um, and mice. 
Is that something that, you know, you fry up a rat and eat it? Or is it something that you maybe use some spices and maybe some, I don't know what you guys, I don't know what you use, oregano or... Uh, what what do you like? What do you like to cook? What what are some things? Humor humor our audience listening by way of um all the provinces here in Canada. Just to let you know, all the provinces in Canada. This is a nationwide broadcast, and also listening uh all fifty states in the U.S. and we are in uh thirteen different countries. And I'm sure we will probably get some people in India listening to this after you guys uh, are on the air. But humor our audience and. Just tell us some things that you like to cook with, some favorites that you like to use, maybe for your main course or for your dessert. Um, as we do know that you have won several, um, by the way, at the Bangladesh Culinary Arts, we heard that you did uh, come. You and actually the reason why you became friends with Anna Herb was apparently that you guys both won the Bangladesh Culinary Arts Convention. You guys tied for first, which I think is absolutely amazing now that you guys have become friends. Usually in that case scenario, you would become enemies, but I'm so glad that you guys have become friends because you're on the air. But anyways, uh, tell us what you like to use, certain ingredients, maybe some certain courses that you like to use. Uh, humor our audience, will you? Yes, sure. Um, several of the different ingredients I like to use for main courses are something like in one of the recipes I have right here is a uh, calamari olive salad. It's got squid and olives and celery and scallion and lemon juice and olive oil. That's in a lot of things, squid and olives and the onions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. In desserts, we like to use... Just a second here, I got it. In desserts, we like to use uh, what's called amaretti, which is like a uh, macaroon or cookie for the crisp, and they, it's kind of... It's different. Hmm. But there's also this uh, dessert called amaretti tiramisu, which is rather good that several of my friends have commented on that you put it's actually eggs but they're raw eggs like in a so I can definitely see that you do like to you you do like your seafood I can definitely see that and yeah. personally if I was ever a critic on like a TV show, a cooking show that you were on, I would definitely give you an A plus because I love seafood. I love squid. I love calamari. That's just something that I don't know if I was born, still born with that. Um, like I love seafood. Um, obviously I'm not a food critic. I'm a sports talk show host and I talk about lifestyle things too. But on on top of that, I know I, I know you like. Uh, uh, using certain ingredients and certain dishes that you like to use. Um, but I did see you on TV that you were on an Indian television show and they actually talked about it here, Mainland. Um, I can't remember what the TV show was, but just how was it being how, how was it being on a cooking show? Just, how, what, what kind of an experience was that for you as a chef? I liked the experience. It, uh, it made me nervous, you know, quite a bit when you're cooking to for several people to be watching me, but it was a very nice experience. At least, you know, it wasn't like I was on the worst cooks in America or anything like that. Yeah. But <laughs> it was a very, it was a, it was a very eye-opening experience to be able to cook with other people who share my passion and share the same goals that I have. Hmm. Well, that's good. Um, in the cooking world, and as we're finishing up here, because I know that uh, you're probably getting charged a lot of money to be calling long distance from New Delhi, um, but finishing up here very quickly, um, your family. Now, I know that uh, we, we've heard about your husband in the news, um, as he is a, a world-famous Indian soccer player. Um, just having that as a fact, having him there supporting you in this uh, field, in this art, as a chef, um, and also, you know, to be honest, making the money as a soccer player over there in India, just you making the money with the food, he making the money with the sport, you know, how has that been having a couple where it's basically, if you don't mind me saying a money making couple, just how has that been for you? It has, it's, 
it's been good. Um, money, of course, isn't the only thing in the world that matters, but it does make a big difference, especially with, you know, when you get into certain spaces and mm-hmm. stuff, that, you know, and with squid and stuff, it's not very easy to get. It's more, it costs more money than regular food. Wow. So I, it comes I... in handy. I like what you say there. Money is not the only thing in the world. That is definitely a true statement, and we definitely honor that here. Uh, that That is definitely a very, very good statement. Uh, thank you for joining us today on the broadcast, long distance from New Delhi. Miss um, Aki says, Kook, it is very nice to talk with you, and I hope maybe some other time we can have you on the broadcast. Maybe get your husband in uh, there with the soccer um, playing. Hey, I'll have to see how good he really is. Is he a good soccer player? Yes, he is. He loves the game. It is his one pass, one of his many passions. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Miss Aki Sejkouk, they're live on the broadcast. It was good having her in. Uh, we'll come right back. We're going to get a commercial break. But Miss Anna Herb Renrut is right around the corner. We got more cooking talk live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show and the Anchor Radio Network's 10th edition of the Caleb Turner Talk Show. Rolls on when we come back. Are you interested in being on the Anchor Radio Network as an expert? Just email or call my good friend Bob and we can get you live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show's Anchor Radio Network's Caleb Turner Talk Show live on the Anchor Radio Network. Just email him at bob slash soundman at gmail.com. You are listening to the special 10th edition anniversary of the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Caleb Turner. We're back live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show and the Anchor Radio Network. Happy 10th anniversary edition, everybody. It's been an honor to have everybody on the show. Everybody that's participated back with Navek and Nod Narb. Uh, it, it was good to have them on the air and ha- have a good variety of things on the show today. Talking chess. And then, of course, our very own Phil Davis of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette live from Bermuda. From his beach condo with his wife there on vacation. I think they were on a four-week vacation. It's just sick. I mean, I only get two weeks off, and he gets four. Like, what's that? I got to get in touch with his agent. Maybe his agent is the one that uh, pulls off these stunts to get long vacations. And, of course, we just got done talking with the mightily esteemed Aki Sej Kook. Long-distance telephone call from New Delhi, a culinary foods expert. And, of course, they met each other. And speaking of they and our herb uh, Ren Red is joining us in studio now. Miss Anna Reb, how are you doing tonight? I'm uh, doing very well, thank you. It's good to have you on the show. And of course, as they, meaning uh, Miss Anna Herb, and Miss Aki says they met at the Bangladesh Culinary Arts Convention. How has it been uh, having somebody that you can look to for advice in your cooking career? Well, obviously, as uh, looking and talking to another chef, uh, we can exchange ingredients and special foods and recipes that we use. Um, Since how we are both in two different countries, obviously, um, we both have way totally different ingredients that we use in each country. So it has been a very good and uh, good experience to exchange recipes and be able to um, have more ingredients to use in my cooking. We talked with her about... um meeting you guys and of course having a good relationship there built um as being best friends now and being able to communicate just a couple of countries over now I, I realize right now um i can definitely tell very very well here in studio that you know your english very well um i'm positive that you took a english course somewhere along the lines have you done that uh yes uh, i started english classes when i was nine okay so then obviously you're very very well uh um very well trained in the English language. Of course, being uh, on several talk shows. But anyways, back to the talk show at hand. Miss Anna Herb, certain dishes. Now, we talked with Miss Cook about this. Uh, by the way, have you ever teased her about her last name, how it's Cook and she's actually a cook? Has that ever been something you've teased her about? <laughs> yes, it. Uh, I definitely have teased her many a time about that. Especially when I first met her, I almost died of laughter when she told me her last name. 
yeah, I'm sure that that was that was very very uh, hilarious. Um, certain dishes that you like to use, um, whether it be dessert, um, or your main course or your salads, as we heard, she makes a very very mean and nasty and just death defying squid salad there that we heard there with the calamari and the vegetable oil and some other things that she likes to put in there. I bet that is absolutely delicious and killer to try because that would be just unbelievable. But for you. Some things that you like to cook, um, various dishes that I'm sure that you are very, very good with. Just hammer our audience, as we told her in the last hour. We are nationwide, we are continent-wide, and we are in 13 other countries. And I'm sure after tonight, we will have 14 and 15 with New Delhi and India and Turkey. I'm sure we will get a lot of listeners in there. But humor our audience. Please humor us with some things that you like to cook with. Okay, well, uh, one of the things I uh, especially like to cook with, speaking of salads, is a jellyfish salad. Um, inside we have uh, jellyfish, uh, salted jellyfish, uh, with uh, cucumbers and salt, and um, cooked prawns, uh, roast chicken, uh, of course vegetable oil, and uh, spring onion, uh, fish sauce, and uh, let's see here, We also I also put in some um, pickled carrots and roasted peanuts and last but not least we also have our fresh coriander leaves and of course to top it off black pepper wow that is in one word wow now the only thing that i don't think i would have in there is the uh, uh the uh the, the pickled carrots um i am personally not a very very big pickled carrots fan well uh actually that's one of the top ingredients that um one of the people, the top chefs, who is a lot higher than me, he that's actually his favorite ingredient in this thing besides the jellyfish. Wow. And now I do like jellyfish. Now, where we're at here now, I know you're not a parent and you're accustomed to the people and the cultures that live here in Vancouver. But we have a lot of Asians and a lot of uh, East Indian people um, and a lot of, uh, well, we're the melting pot um, for the world. But we love jellyfish. I personally do because the Asians cook it very well. But apparently you cook it very well. Uh, yes, I do. I also, uh, speaking of, seems how you have a lot of Asians in your, um, where you are right now. Um, I also, uh, learned how to cook Morton Bay Bugs. Uh, they're from Singapore. They are very tasty, and a lot of my food critics love them. That is not a wow moment. Um, bugs. Wow. That is classic. Um, I actually have a friend of mine whose last name is Bug. And um, I always tease him about, you know, hey, yeah, you're the Bug family, you're Bugsy. But anyways, Bugs Bunny. Um, wow. I don't know if I could actually eat Bugs. Now, I am going on a missions trip this summer to Africa. And I'm sure we'll be eating some Bugs there. And I'll get to have a full experience of what Bugs really taste like. Uh, not the friend Bugs, but because I never want to taste them because that would just be disgusting. But anyways, because they're sweaty. No, but anyways. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, anything else that you like to cook with as well? Humor audience. Oh, yes. Um, uh, one of my main courses is um, I make duck head um, in the middle. With... Quack, quack. <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. Um, it's I put it in the middle, and then on the side I have uh, lamb gravy with purple potatoes and a jalapenos. It is very, very delicious. You should try it. I will make it for you sometime. Um, well, that will be very interesting if you can make that for me, because I will probably not be in Turkey. Speaking of Turkey! Anyways, I won't go with that one. But, um, because you're a cooking expert. Anyways, do you ever cook with turkey? Uh, yes. In many of my, um, recipes, I do cook with turkey feet. Whoa. Okay, that is, that's wild. Anyways, I'm sure this is very, very humoring to our audience. Um, we... We found out that you have won several awards in various um, places in the world. Um, we hear that you won, um, you, know, you live in Hagia Sophia, Turkey, correct? Uh, yes, correct. And we hear that you won the best chef, and that's that's how, apparently how you started your career. Uh, you won the best chef in where you live, and you won a contest, and you were sponsored to go to the next level, which would be the Turkey region. That sounds so funny. The turkey region sounds like I'm talking about a bird or feet like you were just talking about. But anyways, certain awards or maybe promotions or trophies or stuff that you've won in your cooking career. Elaborate for us. 
Uh, yes. Um, in 2011, I won the uh, Bon Appetit Award, which was in Africa, which it was very, it was awesome experience for me. And um, I actually, have you ever seen the uh, TV show called Chopped? Yes, I have. Yes, uh, I won one of those shows one time, and it was probably one of the hardest experiences I've ever had. Seems how I had to cook with very interesting ingredients. <laughs> that is pretty wild. Wow, I did not know that. Man, Bob, you're slow. We should have known about that. 50,000, right? Oh, yes. So that's how basically your cooking experience was born. Yes. So the 50,000 basically started sponsoring you to different countries. Uh, you're, yeah, correct. So charter airlines? Yep. Boats? Yep. Rich husband? Oh, definitely. Wow. So speaking of your husband, talk. tell us about – now we do know this. He is a world-famous cricket player over there in Turkey. Is he a very, very good cricket player is the question. Oh, yes. He has um, scored very many points. And um, I think the high, he is the highest one in the league. He has scored over, over 500 points. I don't think they're called points. But, well, <laughs> maybe you're not very, uh, maybe you're not very, very uh, experienced in the sport. Uh, yeah, I don't really watch him play. Uh, I just, you know, he tells me when he comes home from his games, he's like, hey, I did this, you know, and I'm like, oh, good for you. And then I just get on with my cooking and I make him meals. Oh, so you're a bandwagon fan. Yeah, I just, you know, whenever he wins, I say, yeah, whenever he loses, I, you know, cry with him, whatever. Do you guys talk in the Turkish language? Um, you know, no, he, when he was, uh, actually six years old, he also took English as well. So we normally, English is our second language, obviously, but, um, we normally use that in the house. So no Turkish language, or do you sometimes, maybe when you're ticked off, you use the Turkish language? Yes, uh, especially when we're mad at each other, we normally use the Turkish, Turkish language. So when he has a bad game, you, you're like, oh yeah, so you had a bad game and you lost. That is not the way we talk, but, uh, yeah, sure. That's my impersonation of Indian people. I've heard a lot of, yeah, but anyways, okay. Um, you guys live in Hagia Sophia. Um, your husband's name is... Oh, uh, Kumar. Kumar, that's right, Kumar Khan. I used to call him, actually, Kubla, because the, Ku the great Kubla Khan, and that reminds me of the Ku Klux Klan, but we have a lot of K's now, <laughs> because we had Mrs. Kook in the first segment on the cooking show, and now we have Mrs., um... Uh, Ren Retta, of course, on the other end. Anyways, uh, do you have any kids? Uh, yes, I do. I have one. His name is uh, Poco. He is actually 12 years old, and he is very helpful. He's actually a really, really good at cooking. I have taught him a lot of ingredients. Uh, the number one thing he actually likes to cook is, um, let me find the recipe here that he showed me. He likes to cook a uh, red bean soup. Whoa. So this guy is going to be like the apprentice or the um, Padawan that follows his Sith Lord and Jedi Master in her footsteps, correct? Yes. Okay, so he's going to be the multimillionaire that suppresses you. Uh, possibly. Possibly. So is he going to go into any cooking training? Um, I'm hoping to get him into some cooking training here in Turkish. Um, I might. He actually is wanting to go to um Canada. Speaking of which, in Quebec, uh, he wants to go learn and uh, take a lot of cooking classes there. Might I remind you that you are in Canada right now? True. So then he's gonna come here. And by the way, you're not in Turkey, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're Turkish, so. Um, you're a turkey. Oh, that was pretty good. Anyways, it's been good having you on the show. Thanks for doing this. We'll have to definitely have you back on again following Mrs. Uh, Aki Sej Kook. I always get that name mixed up with your name, which is Anna Herb Renrut. Miss Anna, Mrs. Anna Herb Renrut for everybody out there. Thank you for joining us today on the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the A Curtain Network. Thank you for having me coming. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Miss Anna Herb Renrut, the Caleb Turner Talk Show. It's been good having her here, and uh, she's making her way um, back outside the studio. And, uh, man, she walks fast. <laughs> man, she makes a lot of noise. Anyways, okay, it was good having her on the broadcast today. And um, 
When we come back, we have more on the Caleb Turner Talk Show. It rolls on when we come right back. Just to let everybody know, the Anchor Radio Network's Caleb Turner Talk Show iPhone, iPod, iPad, iPad Mini app is available for purchase in the App Store. 99 cents will get you direct access to the Anchor Radio Network's Caleb Turner talk show. So go to the App Store and get that one downloaded for your iPod, iPhone, iPad, or iPad Mini. Any Apple devices will do. You are listening to the special 10th edition anniversary of the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, the much esteemed and highly respected Caleb Turner. I don't know about highly esteemed and, uh, or much esteemed and highly respected, but thanks anyways, Bob. And happy 10th edition anniversary to everybody listening. Yet again, I say thank you for the support and the listeners that we have had on the show. And a special thanks, of course, to everybody working behind the scenes. Bob, Tom, Rob, and Tim, and also Steve, who is a new addition to the team here on the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. One last segment after this unbelievable day that we've had on the broadcast. Starting right up there with Nevek and uh, Nadnar, uh, there with the chess experts from Serbia, and then we had Phil Davis from Bermuda calling in. Bob worked that out. We had the cooking experts. Um, just, I mean, it, fr- from top to bottom, this has just been an absolutely incredible day. They're finishing up with the last segment there with Anna Herb Renrut and Aki Seb Cook. Aki Miss Cook, Mrs. Cook. Excuse me, I did that again. Mrs. Cook. Uh, their long distance calling in from New Delhi, and of course, Mrs. Renrut live in studio, uh, visiting from Turkey and discussing with us the many, many uh, ingredients and uh, dishes that the two ladies use to cook with and or feed their husbands with. Hopefully there is no poison involved in that. But anyways, I'm sure that their stomachs are accustomed to it because they live over there in the climate. I've saved the best for last. Well, maybe not. I know there's many Canuck fans out there. Obviously. Come on. This radio broadcast is in Coquitlam, which is just, you know, 30, 35 minutes from Rogers Arena, downtown Vancouver. Obviously, there's a lot of Canuck fans listening to this broadcast. At least I would hope there is. I mean, maybe not. Maybe there's a lot of biased Calgary Flames fans out there. Which the Calgary Flames, by the way, are going nowhere this year. The week in review for the Vancouver Canucks is as follows. Sunday, the Canucks lost 4-3 in a shootout at home to the St. Louis Blues in a game that they probably should have won. There's been a lot of games this year where the Canucks probably should have won, but the performance in the third period just didn't buy the win. And by the way, performance is not just good in the first and second period. The performance has been pretty bad in the first and second. They usually don't warm up until the third, but in that apparent game, they kind of waited and shifted. And I know that they came back and tied the game and forced it into a shootout, but the performance wasn't there for all three periods, and I know it's going to be hard to get a perfect performance for all three periods, but you got to try to work hard all three periods. It can't just be a one-period show-up, or even, for that matter, a two-period show-up. Because apparently, when Corey Schneider's in net, they give up more goals in their off period. But when Roberto Luongo's in net, and this is just apparently, by the way, but apparently they give up less goals in their off periods when Luongo's in net. And the stats show it. But anyways, 4-3 loss in a shootout at Chicago on Tuesday. They stunk in that game, and they didn't deserve to even be anywhere near close to the Blackhawks in that game. And 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 it's so upsetting to say that because the Chicago Blackhawks are the Canucks' fiercest rivals, following in a close second the Boston Bruins and then probably the Detroit Red Wings and maybe the Calgary Flames or maybe the Colorado Avalanche. But it, it... It pains me to say that the Canucks lost in a non-appearance game by the Vancouver Canucks. And I know they got the game to a shootout. 
Okay, they worked hard in the last three minutes of the game. That is highly unacceptable to play for three minutes. There's no excuse for a three-minute performance in a hockey game. And they followed it up with a better performance in Dallas with a 4-3 win on Thursday. And then last night with the one nothing boring fall-asleep shutout win for Roberto Luongo in Nashville. I almost fell asleep on the couch. The first goal being with, like, what, eight minutes to go in the game? I mean, it was a snoozer. I hate playing against Nashville because it's boring. There isn't any fireworks. There was there was a fight last night, but there, there there's there isn't any fireworks. There's no shootout. And when I say shootout, I hate the shootout, which is after overtime. But I like the shootout games where there's like you know seven and six goals total or more. Those are the shootout games. The shootout is what I hate. After the game, you know, after overtime, you know, they go and do the shootout. But anyways, you know, I hate that. Despite that, tomorrow. The Vancouver Canucks are in Detroit, the Motor City in Michigan. They will play at 2 o'clock. And, of course, we're going to have the broadcast right here on the Anchor Radio Network. And then on Tuesday, they finish out February here at home against the Phoenix Coyotes. Uh, and then they don't play again until, I believe, Friday, March 1st. And maybe maybe it's March 2nd. Bob, we'll have to get a calendar check on that. But anyways, the Vancouver Canucks, um, this year so far, are eighth in attendance. Um, the attendance average. They, last year they were eighth in it. No, this year they were eighth in attendance average. Right now, I thought that I'd throw that one out there. There's friendly, friendly stat there for you to keep track of. The stats for the Vancouver Canucks. It's been kind of a shaky year for the Vancouver Canucks until Daniel and Henrik decided to start playing. Seventeen games in, into the season. And Daniel Sedin is finally a point-per-game hockey player. Five goals, 12 assists, 17 points, gives him 17 points in 17 games. He also has a game winner. His brother follows in close second place with two goals, 13 assists, with 15 points. So that's pretty good. And Alex Sedler in third with four goals, eight assists, 12 points. So there's a big jump from the Sedins to Edler. So you go from 17 to 15 to 12. and then. Basically, the next stat is a goal and nine assists, ten points for Dan Hamus. So you got two defensemen in the top four in points. And then Alex Burrows with five goals, five assists, ten points. Mason Raymond has five, four with nine points. Zach Cassian, five, three with eight. Yannick Hansen, three, four with seven. And a game winner, KBX, uh, known as the Juice, with five goals, one assist, six points. Chris Higgins, 3-3-6. Three, three, Jordan Schrader, and by the way, um, Chris Higgins does have a game-winning goal. Schrader has two, three, five with a game winner. Kessler has a goal, three assists, four points. M. Lapierre, or Lapierre, as um, John Shorthouse likes to say, a goal, three assists, four points. Jay Garrison with two, one, and three in a game winner. Chris Tanev, a goal, two assists, three points with a game winner. Dale Weiss with the game winner. In the last game, he's got one goal, one assist, two points. And then, of course, the random ones. Kevin Ballard with one assist, one point. Uh, Volpatti with one goal and one point obviously one point one goal one assist one point their home record for the Vancouver Canucks five two and two their road records better than their home record with five one and two on the road um ten three and four overall um so in the seven games that they've lost they've been able to get points in the standings four of the seven times so you know it's been a pretty good year so far considering the fact shortened season we've been waiting for the Canucks to have their bad month and they honestly haven't had it yet so they haven't had a bad month, so it's been good. It's been a good month, by the way, this month. Um, only one regulation loss, and that was back against the Dallas Stars on the 15th. But other than that, I mean, the Canucks are pretty much perfect. Um, but, uh, you know, with seven wins, seven, one, and two. Seven, one, and two is their record this month. That's a very, very good record. For the Vancouver Canucks this month. Roberto Luongo. Five wins. No losses in regulation. Three losses in overtime and or shootout. And I believe they're all three of those losses in overtime shootout are in a shootout. He also has two shutouts. One being last night. He has a 9-4-1 save percentage and a 1.45 GAAs in the top five in goalies. He's dynamic. 
Corey Schneider, 5-3-1 with one shutout, a .912 save percentage, and a 2.68 goals against average. Like I said, it seems like whenever the Canucks have a bad period and Schneider's in net, it seems like he just makes it worse and he gives up the most goals in their bad periods. Luongo keeps his team in it even when they're having a bad period. I think that's the difference. Schneider's a, Schneider's a good goalie, but Luongo is keeping his team in it when they have the bad periods, which the Canucks have had a lot of bad periods, which, by the way, needs to stop. The only way the Vancouver Canucks are going to go deep in the playoffs is that they can play a full 60 minutes, three 20-minute periods, and they can consistently produce, perform at a high, excellent rate, score goals, pass the puck, don't give up goals, which I know is tough in the NHL because there's a lot of good players right now in these days, but you got to have consistent effort and consistent play, and I haven't seen it yet from the Vancouver Canucks. Chicago Blackhawks. Oh my goodness, the Chicago Blackhawks. 14-0-3 to start the year. By the way, they did break the record for most games um, without having a loss in regulation. You know, I don't see the Chicago Blackhawks winning the Stanley Cup, though. I think this is just a regular season thing. You know, I, but, but the funny thing is, is they're doing this without their starting goalie, Corey Crawford. He's been hurt for the last little while, and Ray Emery has been dominant. So, you know, the Vancouver Canucks have produced a pretty good game against the Blackhawks the first time. It was not a very good game the second time, but really, the Blackhawks stunk against the Canucks. You know, they got some really, really good bounces in that game and were able to score four goals on, excuse me, three goals on Schneider, of course, uh, getting the one goal in the shootout. Two goals in the shootout, but it only counts as one in the end because they won. But I think this almost is bigger than Chicago. Coming out of the East, first in the East, get this, hold on to your seats, folks, if you don't know this yet. The Montreal Canadiens are first in the East with 26 points, two up on Pittsburgh and seven up on Tampa Bay. And the next team in their division is Ottawa, two back as well. Can somebody pinch me? I must be dreaming. The Montreal Canadiens are first in the East, second in the league to the mighty Chicago Blackhawks. Wow. That's crazy. The Montreal Canadiens, I don't even know how they've done it. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's it's amazing. But hey, they're doing it. So kudos to them. The Canadian teams in the West, there's one team that's in the playoffs. One team. In the East, there's three teams in the playoff. We have a problem here. It used to be all three teams in the West would make the playoffs, and the three teams in the East wouldn't. Maybe there'd be one Ottawa squeak in. But it looks like right now, now I know Toronto lost tonight to uh, Ottawa, but Toronto still is three, uh, four up on the next out of playoff team. Uh, it looks like Ottawa will definitely probably make the playoffs. Montreal will have to have a mega collapse to not make the playoffs this year. So there will probably be playoff hockey in Montreal, which will be absolutely incredible. The playoff atmosphere in a Montreal Canadiens uh, arena is absolutely unbelievable with the towels. And it's just like Vancouver with towel power. That is your weekly NHL update. Oh, by the way, stat-wise for the Canucks, Bieksa is second in the league to Eric Carlson in defense goal scoring. Edler is third. So we have two in the top three in defensive goal scoring. By the way, Alex Edler, fifth out of all defense in points with 12. He's got four goals, eight assists, 12 points. He's minus one, 12 penalty minutes, two power play points, 35 shots on goal. So very, very good defense stats-wise. Just the defensive part of their game hasn't been very good. And that's funny. That's actually very, very funny. They're defensemen, but they're doing better at offense. It's it's kind of funny, but anyways. Your weekly NHL update, and of course the Canucks update as well. Thanks for joining us today, the 10th edition anniversary. Happy trails. Um... I hope you continue to tune in. This is a bittersweet uh, moment for me because it's just, it's amazing that, you know, we're 10 editions in and we've been producing one every week. It's been pretty amazing since December 22nd, 2012. 
I've always wanted to do something like this. Um, this is a start of hopefully something in the near future that maybe in the next couple of years we can get on a real talk show. This is real. This is very, very real. It's real Radio Network, Anchor Radio Network. Look it up on YouTube. It's there. Well, you have to go to my account. But anyways, but it's there. And happy 10th to Bob, Tom, Rob, Steve, and of course, Tim. Don't want to forget about him. And a special thanks to everybody joining us on the show. Um, it was very, very uh, honoring to have Navet and uh, Nod Narb there on the show earlier from Serbia, the chess experts, and of course, our NFL analyst from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, Phil Davis himself from Bermuda on his vacation. He tuned in and called in. Even on vacation, I thought that was very, very awesome of him to do. And, of course, our cooking experts, the um, Anna Herb Renrut, Mrs. Anna Herb Renrut, Anna, Miss Aki, uh, Aki says, sorry, Kook, and um, it was good to have her on the show, both of them as well, on the show. And hopefully we'll have them on there again, maybe. Um, it'll be a long time for now because we have our cooking uh, expert down as well. That concludes February 23rd, 2013. The Caleb Turner Talk Show will roll on next week here on the Anchor Radio Network. Tune in next week. Same time. Same channel. No, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Same bat channel, as they would say on the Batman, old Batman TV show. The Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. You've got it live on the Anchor Radio Network. You have been listening to a special presentation of the Caleb Turner Talk Show 10th edition anniversary talk show on the Anchor Radio Network. Tune in every week for more Caleb Turner Talk Shows on the Anchor Radio Network.